to Sister Circle Live. Recently, we got a chance to spend some time with our brother from another mother, David Banner. Yes. And during our sit down, the hip hop artist, activist, and actor shared his thoughts on Kanye, his new movie, and why wearing a shirt this winter isn't his plan. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm getting so damn fine oh my God. that this winter, I'm not wearing a shirt. I'm just gonna do like Conan the Barbarian and drape fur over my back. <laughs> like it may have like the lion head like coming back yeah. to America. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's yeah. going to happen. Well, you might as well just put on a sash then. Just put on a sash across the chest and just sash. I don't know what a sash is. Like, I... You know the little thing like a homecoming queen. Oh no. You know the sash where they, when they win. No. The, oh, no. You can't do the sash. No. Both of your pet I might, I might take the sash and put it around my head like Rambo, because yeah. I am going to war with all weakness. Are, are you feeling yourself, sir? Maybe afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, again, uh, David, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah. We definitely appreciate it. Um, before we kick into everything that you have going on, we have to talk about what's going on currently. And uh, recently, yeah, of course, recently, um, mm. Kanye West visited the White House. Uh, to speak with uh, President Trump. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I've been very angry at Kanye, mm -hmm. but when I look into his eyes, there's a problem. There's a mental problem. And this is what I'll say. No judgment on who his family is, but I believe once he moved to LA and now he's encapsulated in a situation after losing his mother, I never really saw um, I never really saw him mourn that situation. And for me, from an ego perspective, she was the only one that could keep him in check. So I was mad at Kanye, but I was just telling my homeboy, dude look like he needs some help. But that's, that's the job of the people who work around him. And the sad part about it is now he's lost his people. So now he's in this place now where he truly is a victim to the situation that fame created. When you really become that star, and that's why we become the way that I believe he's become now, mm -hmm. is we allow people to do stuff that we normally wouldn't allow them to do. Mm -hmm. And we make excuses for people because they're great mm -hmm. in the things that we love. Mm -hmm. But just because you're a genius in music don't mean that you're a, a, a political yeah. genius yeah. or you're a spiritual, a spiritual genius. Yeah. I agree, and, and speaking of all of this, mm -hmm. um, Recently, uh, on The View, Donna Brazile spoke. Um, she was there with the co for Color Girl. She was there with the Color Girls, and um, she talked about how she does not believe that we are in post civil rights. And I was like, I can't wait to David get here because I want to ask him this question because you were on the show previously talking about how marching and stuff. We need to do more than just marching. Well, if Donna is saying that we are not yet in post civil rights, and they marched and protested, and we still not in post civil rights, are we? going backwards, like, are we doing what we should be doing or should we be doing more? This is what I'll say, is when our parents marched, mm -hmm. white people had never seen that before. Right. So they were not prepared for it. So now that general white population sees that, well, these black folks ain't gonna do nothing when they march anyway. When they get to wherever they go and they don't do nothing, mm -hmm. all we gotta do is turn the cameras another way. I tell black people this all the time. Marching doesn't work. Prayer doesn't work. The whole civil rights, everything that we do with civil rights doesn't matter unless there's an action connected to it. Are you going to stop buying something or are you going to make people feel uncomfortable or threatened? Well, I do, I agree with what you're saying, 100,000 million percent. I think that it definitely needs to be tied to an action. But I'm going to have to say that I disagree about prayer. I do think that action does need to have prayer attached to it. And that's just me. Well, listen, I want to switch gears just a little bit. You have some phenomenal things going on. You got a new movie called Never Heard. Uh, it's definitely tackling a lot of issues that we do see in the African-American community. Well, how about we take a look? Okay. The gang leader, formerly known as A-Train, continues to maintain his innocence despite insurmountable evidence against him. This man may be a lot of things, but I'm telling you, he's not a liar. You better be right about this, Monty. I just need to ask you one question. Did you rob that convenience store and kill that little girl in that cashier? I should be out there. You are right where you need to be to hear from God.
Wow. wow. That's quite compelling. Mm -hmm. My God. So you're playing uh, a gentleman in the movie who has a checkered past, who is facing a double homicide, and you also have a son that you've left to be raised with, a single mother, mm -hmm. and now he's falling into those footsteps. Where did you have to go within to tap into that type of individual? Well, the funny thing is a, a lot of the roles that they try to get me to play, um, a lot of times I don't like them because we don't have to act because of the situations that we are placed in. So for me, a lot of the pain, I can just look around me or look into my past. Yes. Wow, oh, wow, that's compelling. It definitely and, is. Yeah, for those of you staying with us for the full hour, we have more of our interview with David Banner coming up next. Mm -hmm. And the conversation mm -hmm. always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And David Banner, man. Wow, yeah, I'm gonna tell you. He's gonna tell it like it is. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to keep praying. Right, you yeah. got to keep yeah. praying. I you got to just stay that. out here trusting God. Mm -hmm. Faith without yeah. works is dead. That's Come what you said. That's what he said. Glad you said what you said. I mean, I just, I know what he meant. I can get out, I can change things, I promise, but nobody's listening. If I get out, will I have a place to come to? No. This part in particular, it meant something to me, and, and I, has, I have to thank Josh Weber, the director. There was one scene where um, Robin Givens, who plays my, um, my ex-wife at the time, we gonna end up getting remarried, I just wanna tell you that, spoiler. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> She, she's on the phone, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in prison, and she's telling me, you need to help your son, we need money. And I stopped the cameras and I pulled Josh aside. I was like, I'm in jail. But, but and imagine oh. how many men wanted to say that and maybe are not in a situation and I can talk for them. Yes. So he said, David Banner, I am not a pro at this. Whatever you see that affects your community and you think you're speaking for them, do it, just do it. You don't even have to ask me. So we're acting, so we're acting, and I literally bust out on the phone, like, what the hell do you want me to do? I'm in prison. You want to send me an application? And everybody was like, that's true, damn. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, we don't get an opportunity to tell, like, they blame black men, especially for so many things, but they don't look at what made us act that way. Right, and, and that kind of, just kind of segues into my next question. What do you think is the fundamental issue in this country when it comes to the mass incarceration of black men? Oh, it's the, I mean, that's easy. It's all about money. America was built on slavery. So for it to continue to be the number one country in the world, it has to get back to what made it great in the first place. So when Trump says make great America great again, when was it ever great for us? Hello. You know, he's literally Message. saying, he's literally saying, <laughs> we want some slaves again. Mm -hmm. So when Kanye wears that hat, he doesn't understand the overall perspective of what that hat means and how it affects our people. Mm -hmm. um, but never heard. We have to make sure, and this is very important. Yes. Never heard is playing one day <laughs> on November 1st, and you know how black folks, we'll wait. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to wait. Because right now, the movie industry, are, uh, they're giving these spotted dates for black films or independent films, and if they don't perform well and that one date, then we're done. Oh, wow. So it's very important. You can go to fathomevents.com and you can pre-order your movie right now. Now, it's gonna be in a lot of selected theaters, but you have to go to the website, type in Never Heard to see where it's gonna be close to you. Now, y'all know y'all travel for some bull. <laughs> so if you gotta travel like 30, 40 minutes, I need you to do that for me. And I look so awesome in the film. Can I just be calling and see how y'all doing? Whenever you call, it's because you want something, Aaron. I mean, I'm trying. Do I? How, how you can know what? I? Just stop. Come on, Shay, you Why know I'm- Why are you calling me? I mean, what do you want me to do? You don't have to do anything. Um, this movie is so very important because although it's a spiritual movie, it's not preachy. And it's so many different things. People always ask me, what do, I, what do I want them to get uh, from the film? And I always tell people the same way that I felt about the God box. I don't know how God is working with you. And I don't know what you're going through in your personal life. So as long as the film resonates with you, even if it pisses you off, that's good. I just want it to, to move someone's spirit. David, I got to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've seen all of these things in our, in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, do, do you feel that we need to get away from some of those roles where the African-American man goes to jail, he's selling drugs, he's not taking care of his kids, he's a pimp, he's this. Do you not think that that's actually playing into the narrative of what the overall masses want people to believe of the African-American man? It's funny, my homie's over there going off because I, 
I stood up in the movie in Atlanta last week and said the same exact thing. I said, when are we going to get some resolve? Okay. When are we going to start answering some of these questions? So does this movie answer some questions? Well, it does actually answer some of the questions. But what I'll say is that comes in our purchasing power. Okay. I actually think a lot of black filmmakers um, benefit off of black pain the same way other races do. And they don't want to solve the situation because if you solve it, then there's no money in it. That's why I tell people I, I would never, ever be a full-time freedom fighter for people because most of the time when you're a full-time freedom fighter, you actually get paid off of black people's pain. I want to end black people's pain. Right. So I, I agree with you. So I think... Doing this role, yes. you, you picked up the role anyway. Yeah. No, because there is some resolution okay. in this okay. film. He okay. does come back and save his son. Okay. Life. Yes. You know what okay. I'm saying? I wanted to, that, I just wanted that piece mm -hmm. to be yeah. clear. Yeah, David, our, our, well, my first love of you is music. You. And, and, but obviously you're multi-talented, you do everything. Um, and, and you know what, just congratulations, and, and I just want to commend you for being an activist as well. Um, but, and, and I know that in this industry we have to, and in this time, we have to create multiple revenue streams, but what I want to know is, how, what is your stance on your artistry as far as music is concerned? Do you feel like, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a slave to the rhythm, mm -hmm. and I'm going to still be, still have to bring forth music. Uh, I really think it's time for me to really move past music. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll tell you why. I will always do music. I will always be involved in music. But if you look at these children, unless there is a depiction that people can actually see, mm -hmm. you can hear words if you, haven't, if you haven't experienced it. The reason why the West Coast was so famous because at the same time Snoop and Dre came out, you had colors, you had menace yeah. to society. You had, oh, oh, so it is that bad. Oh, that's what a 6-4 is. Right. I believe my true calling is to be able to make films so that other artists, when they speak or talk in their music, it can match the movie. Because if you really look at the South, we still haven't got a proper depiction especially Atlanta, a proper depiction of how it is, especially Mississippi. People still look at Mississippi like, you know, I tell them, they like, where you get this outfit? I was like, in the mall in Mississippi. They're like, y'all get yeah. malls? <laughs> what? <laughs> For real? Because, you know, I was just looking at Tom's, uh, reading Tom Sawyer, and they said, right. you know, so well, I... Jackson is like <laughs> low-key bougie. Right, so, so, I, for, so for me, I think as I become an elder, it's up to me to move to higher levels, to make other artists who maybe don't want to move past music, Evolution. right, uh, allow them to be able to tell their story properly. Absolutely. Well, David Banner, we definitely appreciate you. You know, we could go on and on and on and on All for day. three, nine, 39 Sister Circle episodes, but we appreciate your you always being so vulnerable and candid with uh, everything that you have to say. But congratulations on your new movie, Never, Never Heard. Heard. And make sure you go to fathomevents.com to get your tickets. We need you to do that. And davidbanner.com. And davidbanner.com. <laughs> Can we give it up for this man, David Banner? <laughs> Job. My God, we yeah. really love David Banner yeah. down in the circle. <laughs> yes, we do. Don't forget to go to fathomevents.com to secure your tickets to see David Banner and several other stars in the faith-based film Never Heard, which opens in select theaters on November 1st. <laughs>